going to take a look at a watch that's only 1.8 millimeter thick, or actually thin. That's thinner than, for instance, a spring bar. And I'm really curious what it took Bulgari to make such a mind-boggling thin watch. In the world of watches, there's a number of what we call complications. Think of a chronograph, a second time zone, a moon phase, or even the date. That's a so-called complication. Everything besides the indications of the time by means of hours, minutes and seconds is considered a complication. I think, however, that thinness should also be considered a complication. Why, you might wonder? A complication adds difficulties. Extra gears, springs, bridges, etc. to a movement that only indicates the hours, minutes and seconds. Creating an extremely thin movement also creates a bunch of difficulties. No, it does not provide the wearer with additional functionality like a chronograph or additional information like the faces of the moon. It adds comfort. But mind you, it is not a simple complication. It goes much further than adding some springs and gears in order to indicate the phases of the moon. It actually requires the watchmaker to rethink the entire watch, the movement, the case, everything. Over the past eight years, Bulgari has crushed one record in thinness after another. However, there was one record missing, that of the thinnest mechanical watch in the world. This record was actually held by Piaget with the Altiplano Ultimate Concept. It measured 2 mm. Just think of it, that was the thickness of a, of a coin. Bulgari has pushed the limits of the Ultra Thin even further. The Octofinissimo Ultra measures a spectacular 1.8 mm that's even thinner than a spring bar. Although the record has now been beaten by Richard Neal, who shaved off another 500 of a millimeter, the Finissimo Ultra remains an impressive technical feat. While a normal very thin watch already comes with its challenges, creating an ultra-thin watch, as thin as the Octo Finissimo Ultra, comes with even more challenges. The entire watch has to be rethought completely. We're visiting Bulgari and their technical partner Concepto to understand how such an achievement has been made possible. What was the vision behind the Finissimo collection? Um, definitely this idea uh, to uh, equip uh, the super elegant Italian client with one of our watches. I, I usually uh, consider the, 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 the example of the tailoring. Uh, when uh, uh, you think of Italian tailoring, the, the material that uh, Italian tailors use are quite loose. They're soft, they're supple, simply because the weather in Italy is warm. And simply also because the, the way people uh, behave in Italy is, is more, let's say, open. In, in, uh, and in that sense, the materials need to, uh, need to give this flexibility. The Octo Finissimo uh, was designed to be extremely slim, extremely elegant on the wrist and extremely comfortable to wear. Therefore, the style is an attitude and in that sense, it's an Italian attitude. And that's how we've seen the Octo Finissimo. Octo Finissimo is somewhat uh, the backbone of our global watchmaking strategy today. Because since the beginning, since the act of birth and creation of the Octo Finissimo, we have managed to, to truly build a symbiosis of our historical background as a designer, as a jeweler, and through the jewelry design as a designer, and our progressively acquired expertise in watchmaking. And clearly, it's interesting to note that both the watch and the caliber share the name Finissimo. It symbolizes, it encompasses the, uh, the global strategy we've developed on the strategy of development of caliber. Through the very slim calibers, through the quest for micro mechanisms, uh, uh, we've not only developed Finissimo, but then, from this expertise, we've developed Piccolissimo and we are continuously investing and, uh, let's say, learning on how to optimize the space given to all our products in order to maximize the horological performance. It can be a matter of precision, it can be a matter, a matter of power reserve, it can be a matter of additional functions we are adding. But this notion of micro mechanisms that we developed through uh, Finissimo, we are now using it across the board, as I said for Piccolissimo, which is our 
uh, smallest mechanical caliber for ladies' watches, and particularly for jewelry watches, which is the essence of who we are and what we do. But it's also true for all our collection of caliber that we call virtuosissimo, which are the chiming watches calibers. Probably the biggest challenge at the end of the day was to tell ourselves, why don't we do it? Uh, and it's a bit, uh, I hope it doesn't sound complacent, but the fact that we've built this philosophy of reaching records and, and, and aiming for the extra tenth of millimeter, we have built an expertise, but we also have built an, a network of partners who are accompanying us in, in our challenges and helping us to achieve our challenges. And so when it comes to making the extra step, uh, we are not lost because we don't find the right partner for such or such component that we don't produce ourselves. We have the perspective of where we stand in terms of constraints, in terms of dimensions, in terms of uh, weight and resistance of materials and therefore we somewhat know where we stand. We know how to make a 2.5 millimeter caliber. How do we take this to 2 millimeter? How do we take this to, from 2 to uh, 1.5 millimeter? And, and the same for all the, for the case, for the glasses, etc. So it's about setting the goal and saying, yeah, maybe we can do it. Then the second step, which is how do we achieve every little bit of the development? Somewhat, the recipe was there. In terms of looks, the Octo Finissimo Ultra retains the same design codes as the collection and comes in a 40mm monochromatic grey square case with an integrated bracelet. The watch feels almost surrealistic, it is that thin. Its movement is completely visible and actually creates the feeling of depth. When you look at it and, but, and turn the watch around, you just see how incredibly thin it actually is. As said, everything had to be rethought, really everything. Now the case back functions as the movement's main plate and the movement components like the gears, springs and bridges are integrated directly onto the recesses that are machined into the case back. The case is now made of tungsten carbide, not of titanium anymore. And this is a particularly hard, ultra-rigid alloy of carbon and tungsten to ensure the overall rigidity. The ultra-thin crystal, for instance, measures no more than 0.3 mm and it is glued to the bezel and rests on two silicone pads, placed on the screws to make sure it doesn't pressure against the movement in the event of shocks. In terms of the movement construction, the idea is to avoid the different layers of the architecture and the build, to build all functions in the same horizontal plane. Because of this, the hours and minutes are indicated on two separate counters and the seconds are displayed on the fourth wheel, which is positioned at the six o'clock position just next to the escapement. Since the Octo Finissimo Ultra is so incredibly thin, a standard crown for winding and setting the watch could not be used, so Bulgari opted for two horizontal knobs placed on each side of the case, one for winding and the other for time setting. If we speak about time setting and winding, each feature a ratchet will to allow winding and setting in one direction only. The winding knob is unprotected, while the time setting knob comes in between two protectors to avoid inadvertent operations. In addition, the small click wheel prevents backward rotation and with it the mechanism requires a certain force to be operated. A differential gear mechanism is used to handle time setting without disturbing the gear train. About the barrel. The barrel has to be completely redesigned too, to maintain a substantial power reserve, 50 hours despite the finesse of the watch and the 4 Hz frequency. The oscillator incorporates a flat spring. He has no index but gold adjustment weight. He could not feature a conventional anti-shock device. Instead, the variable inertia balance is held in between flexible bridge that will deform in event of a shock. The entire regulator module with its two flexible bridges included is only 1.13 mm thick. Seeing the Ultra in my, in my own hands next to my own uh, Octofinissimo automatic 
it's spectacular. It's really awesome. I uh, already think that the, the automatic is very thin with five point something millimeter, and it really is thin, but it feel, feels super comfortable. But seeing that Ultra with the depth that you can see because of the gears in the movement, and then turning it around and looking at the side, you're like, this is not possible. You know, it's surrealistic, it's mind boggling, but still it's a wearable watch and you can properly wear it on a daily basis. You can wind it, you can set it, you can wear it at all, pretty much all times and it really looks very good. So kudos to, uh, to Bulgari for creating such a beautiful watch.